Section 1.1 is called Introduction to Graphing. Specifically, in this section, we will be graphing lines. And hopefully you all know what lines are. They're these straight-looking things on the x-y coordinate axes. And in this particular case, we're looking at the line y equals x plus 1. And you can tell if a point is on the line, or is a solution to the line, if it's on the line. In this case, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 2 are solutions to this equation because they are on the line. But the points 1, negative 1, and 0, 3 are not because they are off the line. One of the first things you're going to do in this section is determine algebraically whether a point is on the line or not, or whether it satisfies the equation. So let's do that now with some of these points in this equation. So let's check out the point 1, 2 and prove algebraically that it is on the line. And remember, in our ordered pair, the x comes first and the y is second. So what I'm going to do is take my original equation and I'm going to plug the 2 in for the y and the 1 in for the x. And I'm going to simplify. And when I do that, what I find is that I get a true statement out. And when you get a true statement out, the point is on the line and it does satisfy that equation. Now let's check out the point 1, negative 1. We're going to do it the same way. We're going to start with our original equation and we're going to plug negative 1 in for the y and 1 in for the x. And when we simplify that, we get negative 1 equals 2, which is a false statement. And if we get a false statement out, it means that the points we plugged in are not on the line and therefore are not a solution to this equation. The next thing we need to do is we need to be able to determine whether an equation that we have is a line or whether it is not a line. And the process we're going to do to figure that out is really quite simple. If we look at the first equation, you'll notice that on both the x and the y, the exponents are 1. And whenever we have an exponent of 1 on all our variables, we have a line. If you look at the second equation, it's in a slightly different form, but the exponent on the y and the exponent on the x are again both ones, so again we have a line. On the third equation, we only have one variable, in this case the x, but the exponent on that is also a one, so again we have a line. But on number 4, although we have an exponent of 1 on the y, on the x, we have an exponent of 2, which means it is not a line. And determining whether something is or is not a line is as simple as that. The final thing we're going to do in this section is graph some lines. And the first method we're going to use to graph lines is by using the x and the y-intercepts. Now the x-intercept is just the place where the line crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercept is just the place where the line crosses the y-axis. So to find those points, what I'm going to do is set up a table of values for x and y, and I'm going to let x equal 0. Now when I plug in 0, for the x in my equation, remember anything times 0 is 0, what I end up with is 4y equals 20, and hopefully that's an equation you can all do in your heads, just divide both sides by 4 and get y equals 5. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the y. I'm going to plug 0 in for y. And when I do that, 
again, anything times 0 is 0. And hopefully, again, you can do this in your head. Divide both sides by 5 and get x equals 4. So now we have an x-intercept of 4, 0 and a y-intercept of 0, 5. And to graph my line, I'll just put down the 4, 0 and the 0, 5 and draw a line between them. And if you're drawing graphs by hand, you don't have to get too exact as long as you make sure to label your points. And we've graphed our first line. So let's try another one. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to try and graph this one by using the x and y intercepts. So I start by setting up my table and let x equals 0. But look what happened in the first example we did. When I let x equals 0, basically what happened is the x term went away and I got this. I did not even have to worry about the x term after I plugged in 0. So we're going to do the same thing on this second one. When I plug the 0 in for x, it's the same as the x term going away. And I just need to worry about negative 3y equals 6. So again, divide both sides by negative 3, which gives us a y of negative 2. So we have a y-intercept of 0, negative 2. And now let's do the same thing for y. We plug 0 in for y, and that's the same thing as the y term going away. And we just have to deal with 2x equals 6. So divide both sides by 2, and that gives us x equals 3. And now I have my x and my y intercepts, so I just have to plot them on my graph. And again, if you're ever doing these freehand, the important thing isn't how pretty your graph looks, but whether or not you label the points so that everyone knows what you're talking about. And we've just graphed two lines using the x, y intercepts. Now let's go over a few equations where this will not work. And here's the first one. And this is going to happen anytime we have a zero out here or no constant term in our equation. Because what happens is I can start with my table, and when I plug 0 in for x, the x term basically goes away and I get y equals 0. But the problem is now, if I plug 0 in for y, I get 2x equals 0, and I come back to the same point, and I need two points to define a line. So when this happens, simply plug in any other simple point for x and then plug it in and solve for y. So I'm plugging 1 in for my x. And now I'm going to move the 2 over to this side. And I'm allowed to do that <clears throat> as long as I remember I need to change the sign on that 2 when it crosses the equal sign. So now I have my x and my y-intercept. They're both the same point in this case. And one other point, which is all I need to define my line. And then draw the line between them. And I probably should have put that 0, 0 somewhere else. But again, the important thing is that the points are labeled, so everyone knows what you're talking about.
the other time the table isn't going to work is when you only have one of your variables. In this case, y equals 3. Because in this case, no matter what I put in for the x, y is 3. So no matter what the x value is, the y value is always constant at 3. When you get one of these, what you want to do is just pick two points where y is 3. Let's say 0, 3, and 2, 3. And again, we have our line. When you only have a y, you will only have a y-intercept. This particular equation has no x-intercept because the line will never cross the x-axis. It does have a y-intercept at 0, 3. Similarly, when we have just the x, when we try to set up our table, it doesn't matter what we put in for y, x will always equal 2. So in this case, to graph the line, Just pick two points where x equals 2. And you're done. And just like the y, when we only have an x, we only have an x-intercept. There will be no y-intercept on this graph. The last method we're going to use to graph a line is using slope-intercept form. When a line's in this form solved for y, that is the y-intercept, and whatever's in front of the x is the slope. So to graph this line, We're going to start at the y-intercept, which in this case is 0, 1. And from the y-intercept, a slope of 2 means we go up 2 and over 1. So we're going to start here, go up 2, and then over 1. And that brings us to the point 1, 3. And we simply draw a line between those two points and we are done. Let's try one with fractions now. Let's try y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. Same basic idea, except we're going to have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of 2 thirds, which means 2 units up, 3 units over to the right. We're going to graph it the same way. We're going to start at our y-intercept of 0, negative 1. And from the y-intercept, we're going to go 2 units up and 3 units over, which brings me to the point 3, 1. And then connect the dots.